For the spooky season this year, I knew I wanted to create Annabelle the doll as cake. I'm a huge fan of horror movies. I love the Annabelle movies. I love the Conjuring series. So this was a no brainer for me. Yeah. I've never made a doll out of cake and I'd really like to try. But I have a very busy October this year, so I know there's no way I'm going to finish this cake by Halloween. Oh no. So I'm calling it a late Halloween cake. But now I have another idea. I've always been obsessed with these paintings called Gift Wrap Doll by the painter James Rosenquist. I saw them in the Metropolitan Museum growing up and fell in love with them. I love the way that he paints the reflective plastic over the doll's faces. There's something so beautiful, but also creepy about it. So now that Halloween is kind of ended and Christmas is coming up, I've decided that I'm going to create Annabelle the doll and I'm going to gift wrap her, making myself an Annabelle doll gift wrapped. <laughs> and she will be my late Halloween, early Christmas cake. So let's see if I could pull this off. My name's Melissa and I'm an artist. I create cakes, sculptures, and a lot of other cool things. And today I'm making Annabelle the doll gift wrapped. Let's get to it. I'm starting with creating an armature structure out of wood board and threaded rod so I can make Annabelle standing up. I'm stacking her in red velvet cake because I know that's going to be super creepy when I cut into her and that red cake just pops. I was video chatting with my niece while I was building up this cake and she really, really, really wants to be in one of my YouTube videos. So here she is. Hello. I'm on camera, right? <laughs> yeah, you're on camera. Let me meet you. <laughs> Nice. She says, nice to meet you, everyone. She's so cute and I love her. Now let's get back to the cake. Like a lot of old I dolls, Annabelle you. has a long, creepy dress. This makes her very easy to build up in cake because she's really just one tall stack of cake that is narrower towards the top and wider at the bottom because her dress is going to flow outwards. I've decided her arms are not going to be cake because it's kind of impossible to make them out of cake. I'm using one piece of wire for her arms, wrapping it around the threaded rod in the center and then extending it outwards for the length of the arms. To keep the arms light, I'm just building the round shape of them up out of tin foil, and then I'll add a thin layer of modeling chocolate on them later. Once I get past her shoulders, her neck gets really, really thin and narrow, and then it has sort of a bulbous head on top. So I add in my little board of support right on top of the neck, which will support the weight of the head on top of that thin, narrow neck. Now I can start sculpting Annabelle's creepy face. So she's a doll, her face is very angular. She's got a very narrow chin, super wide set eyes, and very defined cheek and jaw lines. I'm focusing to make sure I get her wide set eyes super accurate and proportional, and the rounded corners of her creepy smile are super indented, as well as the area below her cheekbones and before her jawline. I really wanna make her dress look like actual fabric. So I know I'm not going to use fondant or modeling chocolate because they're too thick and opaque. I need something more thinner and flexible. But before I add on anything for the dress, I need to cover up that tin foil on the arms and puff up those sleeves, just like my sleeves that I'm wearing here, with some modeling chocolate. And I'm just gonna cover the ganache around the base of her dress with fondant, which gives me a nice clean surface to add my fabric on top of. Unlike my husband, Annabelle is not bald. Mm -hmm. I love you, Gil. <laughs> So we need to give her some hair. I have colored some modeling chocolate, a light brown shade, and that's gonna be the base for her hair. The defining moment of her hair is definitely her bangs and then her braids. I'm sculpting her hair with my Dresden tool to make it very fine and straw-like. And I'm making the braids separately and I'll add them on later after her dress is on because it'll be very hard to add the dress on top around the braids. She's definitely looking like Annabelle at this point, although it's a little hard to see the full picture without those braids. Right now she's got a bowl cut and I'm a little bit hesitant if this is actually gonna look like her. So let's see if we paint her. Maybe she'll look more like the Annabelle we've come to love and fear. Maybe just fear. <laughs> because she's a doll and is technically not supposed to be alive, she doesn't have a lot of shading on her face, which is really fun for me because I'm usually painting human faces where there's a lot of depth and a lot of shading involved. The moments on her face that are very deep set and angular that's where I'm adding more shading, just with some black grayish hues, especially in the indents below her cheek, the corners of her mouth, underneath her nose, and around her eyes. Her deep red lips, rosy cheeks, and voluminous eyelashes all add to the creepiness of her face because those are the parts that are supposed to be added to the doll to make her look beautiful, maybe adorable, but on Annabelle, it just looks weird and scary. <laughs> I'm painting her hair a golden brown with some light areas of whites and yellows to pop. 
I definitely see Annabelle at this point. Again, I'm still a little bit hesitant because of the bowl cut. She really needs those braids. But first we need to dress her. I'm not sure what to use mm. to make her dress look like fabric, but I just remembered that I have these old flex frost fabric sheets that I saved from an old TV job when I was a culinary producer. We actually used them to create a lampshade and they worked really well. They were nice and translucent, especially when we turned on that light. It really looked like the fabric for a lampshade. So this could be perfect for her dress. But there's one issue. Uh -oh. These flex frost sheets come in so many colors, but the one color I have them in is tan and her dress is white. So I'm going to have to paint each one white before I can add it onto the cake. I'm calling myself a pattern maker now because I'm actually cutting out the exact pattern that I need for her dress and adding it on in sections, just like you would do when you make a real dress. And these edible fabric sheets are working out perfectly. I'm able to bend them, drape them, create creases to make it look like actual folded and sewn fabric. And it adheres so well to the fondant with just a little bit of piping gel. This is officially one of my favorite materials to work with, especially when I'm making clothes for a cake. I've also painted one sheet red to add on the red belt, red detailing. And now I'm going to make the red rose applique that goes along the belt. I'm bending and shaping strips of the red fabric all along the edge of a circle, making my way to the center. And it looks just like a cute little rose applique. Finally, it's time to add those braids onto Annabelle so we can see if it actually does look just like Annabelle. I pre-painted them before I add them on. And then I just fix up the seams, give a little paint. And I gotta say, those braids really make her look like Annabelle. But they're not complete without those little bows because the more cuteness you add to it, the more creepy it is. The only thing I'm unhappy with at this point is that her face feels a little bit flat. So I'm adding a layer of confectioner's glaze all over her face to make her shine like a porcelain doll that's glazed. She's shiny. And wow, at this point, I have made Annabelle. I think she looks awesome. Super creepy, super doll-like, just like I wanted. But we're not done yet because this is my late Halloween, early Christmas cake. So we need to gift wrap her to make her the perfect creepy Christmas gift. To make the edible plastic, we're going to use gelatin. And I've seen Side Serve Cake do this, and now I've seen a bunch of other cake artists do it as well. So I thought, I gotta try this. I'm mixing powdered gelatin with some water, heating it up till it's nice and clear. And I'm coloring my gelatin red. I pour the gelatin onto a sheet of acetate that I've taped down, and I use my offset spatula to spread it nice and thin, as thin as I can. I'm testing out two shades, a darker red and lighter red, and I'll decide later which one I like more. I've let these dry overnight, and now I'm separating them from the acetate, and I'm left with these super cool sheets of plastic. It feels like plastic. It's crazy cool. And I'm holding them each under my arm to see the difference between the light and the dark. And in the end, I've decided to go with the lighter tone because I don't want it to make Annabelle look too red, too dark. I still wanna show all the beautiful work I've done underneath the plastic and I want it to shine through. And now it's time to wrap her up. With just a little tiny drop of water in a few areas, the gelatin sticks really well onto her and I'm able to wrap it around. I'm doing one piece in the front and one piece in the back. This gelatin plastic is so durable and bendable, super reflective, just like plastic. I'm still blown away by how cool it is. And I love how she looks gift wrapped, but to make her extra creepy, I really think she needs a bow. And I actually got the idea for this bow from Natalie Sidesurf in a video she did last year, I think, for Christmas where she wrapped a cake. So thank you again, Natalie. You're truly an inspiration to us all. I looped together strips of the edible red fabric and glue them all together, overlapping each other to create an adorable little bow that I place right on top. And I think the bow really ties the whole cake together. She looks super creepy all gift wrap in that red plastic. I'm using different color lights as she spins and you can just see how reflective that plastic is, just like in those paintings by James Rosenquist of the gift wrap dolls. Annabelle is just the perfect Halloween cake, super creepy. And now we've tied in the jolly season of Christmas, making her all gift wrap with that adorable little bow on top. And that juxtaposition of happy and scary is exactly what I wanted to achieve. I'm very proud of this cake and I I really don't want to cut her, but she has a cake and she must be cut. So let's try this out. I'm not sure how this edible plastic is going to cut.
I love how the red velvet cake pops. It makes me think of blood, which is what I want for a spooky cake. And the plastic was a little hard to cut, but it looks really cool. This cake makes me really excited for more creepy Halloween cakes that I can make in the future, and also gift wrap cakes that I can make. I feel like there's so many cool techniques I could come up with with this edible plastic. My mind is spinning. <laughs> You'll just have to wait and see for what I come up with. If you enjoyed watching me create this Annabelle cake, please give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe for so many more cool cakes to come. As always, you can see the whole process of me creating this cake from start to finish, no cuts, on my YouTube membership or on my Patreon, where there's even more perks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you felt inspired, and I'll see you in the next video.